good morning today uh, we'll be seeing uh, in accounts we have already seen that uh, what are accounting principles and what are the basics of accounts and what do you, what do you mean by accounting and what do you mean by uh, bookkeeping when we know the basics of uh, the theory part of accounts we'll move on to the next topic which is rules of debit and credit when you talk about rules of debit and credit it basically means how to debit or how to go about doing a double entry system when you are uh, following double entry system each entry is supposed to have two aspects and all those two aspects are recorded in the proper books of accounts or proper accounts so before going to the rules of debit and credit i would like to tell you what is account an account is a place where you record similar type of transactions related with the same type of entity or same item for example if you say an account prefix with cash it means a account which is including cash items so all the transactions or all the aspects related with cash will be recorded in one place that's why it is called a cash account i repeat cash account is a place where all the transactions or all the aspects related with cash will be recorded at the same place in the chronological order so an account whether it is cash or bank or any other type of account is an account which tells us that there is a place for each and every type of account so when account is clear usually the account is divided into two types one is called re uh, personal account and the other one is called impersonal personal account and impersonal account personal account as the name indicates relates with people or persons you can have natural as well as artificial persons can have both types of things impersonal account means which are not personal accounts or which doesn't deal with natural or artificial persons so impersonal accounts are further divided into two they are called real account and nominal account real account as the name indicates deals with something which is having a real uh, reality or in reality which has a physical appearance so physical appearance things which are having physical experience uh, appearance in business they are called assets so real account deals with assets nominal means which are uh, normally done or which affects the business in a manner that you have a day to day uh, aspect or day to day effect on the business these things are your expenses incomes losses and gains so nominal account deals with expenses losses incomes and gains so if we look look at an account accounts account can be divided into two types basically one is personal and other one is impersonal personal account deals with people persons they can be natural persons as human beings or they can be artificial persons which can which are created by law and impersonal accounts are divided into two real and nominal means impersonal means which are not related to persons so it must be dealt with something else which are affecting our business the things which affect our business are assets expenses losses incomes and gains so they are divided into two one is real which deals with assets other one is nominal which deals with expense losses incomes and gains now there is one aspect which is left out can you tell me which aspect yeah i tell the other aspect which is left out is liability because we have seen when there is a accounting equation we have assets is equal to liabilities plus capital out of this equation all those aspects which are affecting the assets are being taken but all those things which are liabilities or capital only a part of it is taken by the personal accounts that is creditors or debtors otherwise liabilities and capital are not appearing in any type of account so we need to understand that out of these 
to personal and impersonal account the liabilities and capital they belong to personal account so they are also included in the uh, personal account uh, personal account division now when we have liabilities or capital why they are taken personal account is each and every liability or the capital relates to some person so the liabilities or the capital they actually represent a person represent a person like if if you are introducing a capital in the business the businessman is introducing the capital so businessman is represented by capital so or in other way in other words you can say capital is represented by the businessman or capital is introduced by the businessman so capital is called a representative personal account so talking about assets equal to liabilities plus capital this is an accounting equation and in this accounting equation we have two aspects which are liability and capital as i said assets we have already taken in real account but we don't have a place for liability and capital the reason being they are not uh, they are not as as of now they are not related to any personal or impersonal accounts but if we analyze it in detail liabilities and capital always represent represent a person being the in the sense that capital is introduced by a person in the business so it is a representation of a person so capital represents a person or the owner so that's why they are called representative personal accounts in other words or in in, in addition to this there is a liability this liability is also representing a person like you have a liability outstanding salary now outstanding salary is to be paid to the people who have rendered the services to the organization so when they have rendered the services to the organization naturally they are supposed to be paid for the services which we have not paid so we are we are not paying something which has become due and that's why they are called liabilities so such liabilities represent some person that's why they are also referred to as representative personal accounts so they also belong to personal account so other than your natural and artificial person there are liabilities and capital which can be uh, categorized into personal account so we have liabilities and capital now the topic was rules of debit and credit what should be debited and what should be credited or what which aspect of a transaction should be debited and which aspect of transaction should be credited that was the topic and why you went on to know that there is an account and there are two types of accounts and what are the items which appear in the accounts the reason being whenever we are going to write a journal or convert a transaction into a entry we need to understand which aspect should be debited and which aspect should be credited we need to understand why it should be credited and debited based on the classification that whether it is a personal account or an impersonal account or whether it is a personal account or real account or nominal account so that's the reason why we divided the account into two and then we uh, tried i mean then i tried explaining why there is a person and impersonal and why there are people and assets and expense losses incomes and gains and capital liability why they appear in personal account being represent personal accounts the reason is to understand the rules of debit and credit we need to understand there are rules related with personal account real account and nominal account so talking about the rules of debit and credit as we have understood what do you mean by an account and what are the different types of accounts available each type of account is having a rule related to debiting and crediting that kind of account so talking about the rules of uh, personal account real account nominal account these accounts will have different types of rules now what are the rules personal account rule says debit the receiver credit the giver real account rule says debit what comes in and credit what goes out nominal account rule says debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains now how to understand which aspect becomes a personal account and what is that aspect why that aspect is to be debited or why that aspect is to be credited let's talk about personal account suppose suppose goods are sold to ramu is a transaction let's say goods are sold to ramu for a value of rupees 500 let's take this way so in this transaction there should be two aspects which should be bifurcated between these three accounts the first aspect is 
goods because goods are going out of the business next aspect is ramu which is uh, with the ramu is the person who is actually taking the goods or purchasing the goods from us so we are selling the goods to ramu so there is one more aspect which is sales but since sales is related to goods we will consider these two as one aspect so one aspect of the transaction is sales the other aspect of the transaction is ramu because ramu is a person who is who is uh, getting the goods now sales bill is a revenue or income you know so this is the revenue and ramu is a personal account so personal account belongs to personal account here and ramu is in receipt of goods then goods are sold to ramu ramu is actually the receiver so when ramu is the receiver we we write we we write ramu is the receiver and we apply the rule when someone receives when a person receives something he is to be debited according to the rule so debit the receiver so ramu belongs to personal account and personal account rule says debit the receiver so we we, we are actually going to debit ramu the other way of understanding it is when one aspect is debited the other aspect will be credited but we need to uh, check or clarify whether it is correct or not sales is revenue or revenue is otherwise called income and income belongs to nominal account and nominal account rule says debit all plus expense and losses credit all incomes and gains so since revenue or income uh, is the sales here the sales aspect is to be credited so if we analyze this transaction we analyze this transaction there are two aspects goods sold and ramu and goods sold are nothing but sales and the other aspect is ramu which is a personal account so one is a revenue or income which belongs to nominal account and the other one is the person ramu and he belongs to personal account so his uh, on him the personal account rule will apply let's say the sales thing is income and income is uh, coming to nominal account and when, when the rule is applicable to that then it says debit what comes in sorry debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains the meaning is when you are having sales and it is an income it should be credited so we are going to credit the sales item ramu belongs to personal account he is a person he belongs to personal account and personal account rule says debit what as uh, debit the receiver when you say debit the receiver receiver is supposed to be debited so your identification of the transaction is ramu should be debited and sales should be credited so this is the analysis of this transaction called goods are sold to ramu for 500 rupees two aspects are identified both the aspects are debited or credited according to the rules which are mentioned here likewise we can analyze any transaction find the two aspects and put those two aspects into any of these accounts and apply the rule and we can debit and credit the best way to understand is you can find the two aspects let let let's say the two aspects are correct so if one aspect is debited naturally the other aspect is credited but since we have learned the rules we should apply the rules to each aspect to be sure that that is debited or credited whether it should be debited or credited or whether it should be done properly or not we have seen that uh, when goods are sold to ramu in the previous example it was satisfying to accounts personal account and nominal account and we found out that what which is the rule to be applied to what aspect so ramu was a person and personal account rule we applied and we debited his account in that previous case and nominal account sales was the income or revenue for the business so it was belonging to nominal account and nominal account rule says credit all incomes and gains so sales was credited and ramu was debited that was the example in the previous uh that was the explanation for the previous example now next example if we take let's say let's include let's try to include a uh a transaction for example paid salary paid salary to mohan 1000 let's say this is the example and here the the aspects which we can identify is one is salary is paid because salary is an expense for the business so salary is paid to some person mohan even if we are 
not mentioning this more in here. Let's say the example is paid salary. That also means the same thing for the transaction. Mohan is to be more specific to whom we have paid. Now, when we pay salary, what is happening in the business is salary is one aspect which is paid. Salary is an amount of money which is paid to a person or an organization for getting services from that organization. So that means when you are paying salary, salary becomes your expense and expense as we know belongs to nominal account. So salary belongs to nominal account and nominal account rule says debit all expense and losses. That means salary being an expense and belongs to nominal account, it should be debited. The second aspect is the money involved. When you paid paid salary, that means you have paid in cash. Nothing is mentioned about whether it is paid through check. If it is paid through check, it would have been mentioned in the exam in the in the question itself that paid salary by check. But in this case, it is just paid salary. So it means you are paying only cash. Now, when you are paying cash, the other aspect involved in this transaction is cash. Cash belongs to real account because it is a asset. So cash belongs to real account since it is an asset. Asset and real account rule says debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Now cash in this case, I believe that it is going out. When it is going out, credit rule applies. So credit what goes out, cash is going out. So you credit cash. So your aspects are salary. This will be debited. And the other aspect is cash, which should be credited. So this is how you identify another transaction and find out the aspects involved in it and debit and credit them according to the rules applicable.